In this video, we're going to get a glimpse into the future of AI arts and why it's both worse than some artists say and better than others do. I'm going to begin by sharing with you a very concrete, a hands-on example of the kind of phenomenon we're going to see in the years to come. And then I'll give you all the lessons that we should learn from it as artists. There's something that's crucial for artists to understand. Now, I'm someone who makes art, but my day job is in AI research. So two weeks ago, I was talking to a young intern at our lab. The more we spoke, the more impressed I was with him. At only 14 years old, he displayed an incredible ability to understand the concepts I was throwing his way. And soon enough, he had an idea that had never crossed my mind. So I decided to give his idea a try and the results were visually very impressive. So in this video, we're going to have a lot of fun playing around with this idea of his and making cool stuff. But really, the main point is to demonstrate a lesson that is really important for aspiring artists to learn. And hopefully this will be an opportunity for you artists out there to kind of get more practical with AI, get a more practical demonstration from somebody who knows both about art and AI. So for all artists out there, I hope this video will help you get a bit more familiar with the AI threats and take away this important idea that I want to distill to you guys. And don't worry, I'm not going to get deep into the code or anything technical. There's just a tiny concept I have to explain first at the start, and then it's going to be all insights and fun. So let's go. All right, let's get through the little concept I've mentioned. That's the concept of auto encoders. Now, this is a crucial concept in modern AI because it's at the roots of why AI art models are able to work as well as they do. So an auto encoder, think about the name. It automatically encodes. It's a machine learned compression algorithm. Now, I'm going to explain this concept in two steps. First, I'm sure all of you have saved images on your computer before. When you do, you use a format such as JPEG or PNG. Now, JPEG or PNG are actually compression algorithms. They take the pixels in your image, which are just numbers, and express them in a compressed language to take less space on your computer. And then you have a JPEG or a PNG decoder, which takes this compressed and concise representation and reconstructs the image from it. So that's the first step to understanding autoencoders. There are ways to use your computer to compress the raw pixels of images into fewer numbers to take less space and then decompress them back into the original image. All right, so step two. Basically, out of the word autoencoder, right now we've covered the parts encoder. Hopefully I've explained it well enough and you guys all understand it. What about the first part, the auto part? So that's the neural network part. In the case of JPEG and PNG, computer scientists are actually writing all the instructions down in code for the computer to follow in compressing the images. We know exactly how it happens. By contrast, in the case of autoencoders, it's learned automatically. Basically, we have a system that uses some parameters to encode and decode our image. At the start, the parameters are trash, so the images coming out of our system look like trash. But we're going to compare the original image and the one that came out of the system and tell the system how well it's doing. And by doing this over and over and over, we make the parameters better and better and better until eventually the system has learned to reproduce the images almost perfectly after encoding and decoding. Cool. So by creating a system that encodes and decodes images and training it to have perfectly decoded images, we get an autoencoder. Phew, so now we're done with the technical talk. And I know for a lot of artists, AI is a bit distant and ghost-like. You hear a lot of talk about it, but it doesn't really feel that real. My hope is that this video will bring you closer to it and really make you reflect on yourself as an artist and on what AI really is and what it really means. And I hope it'll give you a lot of new ideas and that you're going to share them with us in the comment section because that's how we're going to move forward against the AI threat. So let's get our hands dirty straight away. I've explained this autoencoder thing to you guys, but that might be a bit abstract. So I'm going to demonstrate this training process right now, live. So let's train an autoencoder together. And once again, don't worry, I'm not going to get technical. I got the technical part covered. You guys don't have to do anything or think about anything. So just to give you a very brief tour. Um, so here I'm loading the data. 
I'm just doing like 80,000 images. It's going to be a very bad auto encoder, but don't worry. Later on uh, in this video, I'm going to use like state of the art models and we're going to have a lot more fun. This is just a demonstration how we train them. So that's the number of images I'm using. Then here I'm just uh, printing some of, the some of these images. Then I'm defining the auto encoder class here. I'm doing something a little fancy for those of you who kind of know just a little bit more about AI. I'm actually doing kind of a mix between a, a variational autoencoder and a generative adversarial network. Uh, that's just for those who are curious. And here I'm showing you guys um, when we haven't trained the model, uh, the images coming outside of the model, they look like this. So they look like trash because the model has, been, has not been trained yet. And here I just have the training function and I'm just gonna run it and we're gonna see what happens. Actually, I need to define the model first. So this goes here and just run this. And it's going to take a while to train because I'm just using the Google servers and they're not the best. But hopefully uh, this works out and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right. So the model has finished training. Uh, it's obviously not... Uh, perfect. You can see the reconstructions here, but actually for just like a few hours of training on basic uh, Google GPUs with just 80,000 images, you can, it to, you can compare that to like the 5 billion in the Lion data set. I'm actually pretty proud of the results. So now that we have an image model uh, that encodes and decodes images, we can proceed with the idea that this 14 year old intern in our lab actually had. So what he said is we've got this model that tries to reconstruct images as well as it can but there's always going to be some error between the original image and the final image and pay attention here because this is a 14 year old coming up with this so you can probably understand it too he said you can just uh, run the model on the reconstruction which already had some error and then you get more error right and then you do this over and over and over in a loop and he said that way you can actually find out what kind of errors are accumulating and where are the flaws of your image model. But what's more interesting to us is the more like artistic visual uh, application of this. What you can do is make a video out of the error propagating through the image. So you loop, you do this loop over and over. And every time you do one step, you collect an image and you put them all together and that makes a video. And we tried it out and uh, the results were actually pretty incredible. All right, so let's just try it out first on this self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh. I'm not going to comment on this too much right now, but when I saw the results at first, I was like, there must be a problem somewhere in my code because this is just too interesting. So let's just try a few more things with this model that is home trained. And then let's move on to more like impressive state of the art models that don't get as much like reconstruction error. watching this I was starting to wonder what would happen if I were to feed it a completely black image this is I think a very great way to exemplify something about AI that many artists are not realizing at all but we'll get to that when we've gone through more experimentation first what about a completely white image All right, I think this is getting a bit repetitive, so let's move on to another model. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about Stable Diffusion, and Stable Diffusion 3 is one of the best models out there for image generation. And there's some open versions, uh, like cheap versions of its image model uh, that I, we can actually use. So I wrote some codes to, to use it, 
And let's see what the results are when we do the same thing, but with a state-of-the-art model instead of the crappy one that I just trained. Okay, so it's definitely different. Uh, let's try something else here. Let's try to feed it a completely green image. Pretty interesting. Now, what if we feed it a painting again? Let's try the Tres de Mayo by Francisco Goya. I'm not getting the same kind of abstract Miro abstract art vibes that I was getting from my own trained model but it's also kind of interesting what's happening at the end like it seems to repeat in multiple scenarios and it's just very interesting how it's moving like ants and then there's just this big blue thing that comes across the screen that's very interesting and it's, it's kind of pretty too okay so this model seems to collapse into the same thing every time it's also kind of blurry so I'm just gonna move on to another one uh, the next one is just a random one I found on Hugging Face, so let's see how it goes. Now, right now, I just want to get back to a face, so let's try to do it on this portrait by this self-portrait by Albrecht Dürer. All right, this one seems to also have the same uh, obsession with like turning everything dark and having a blue thing go across the screen. I wonder what would happen if I were to feed it like a black and white image. Let's see what happens. All right, basically the same thing happens. Um, but so far we haven't used any like official models. So let's get into that. Let's use the actual stable diffusion model uh, from a bit back because the models that they have right now, uh, I can't really run them myself. Let's see what happens when we use an actual state-of-the-art model. Let's go. Okay, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I feel like I kind of liked the um, the big shapes we were getting with uh, my own uh, variational autoencoder that I trained myself. It's kind of interesting because it relates to like a, something, if I were to improvise a lesson for artists to learn uh, from this and something that I'm taking away from my own personal arts is when we look at the, what is being lost by reconstructing many times, it seems like the smaller model retains shapes whereas the bigger models retain texture and detail and there's a big concept in machine learning in general that the smaller a model the more it has to understand the concepts of its data because it can't afford to actually learn things by heart and this is a big uh, thing for that artists can benefit from because the way that ai is improving is not by understanding the data more it seems um, it's more by making bigger and bigger and more powerful models that just have more facilities to replicate data but don't necessarily understand it better now this obviously needs to be nuanced because uh, you know you're gonna have all the computer scientists and all the AI people who see so much nuance everywhere obviously when you're doing research in that domain you're you're just gonna have nuance everywhere but just something that I'm taking away from this for my personal arts is don't be so scared of the big models because in many ways they're not that much more impressive than the small ones. So let's get to what I've been mentioning in the intro. What does this whole thing teach us about the future of AI in art? A kid with no experience in either arts or AI was able to come up with a new creative way of using AI in a way that wasn't intended. Imagine what artists who take an interest in AI will be able to come up with. In this video, we were able to twist the AI into a new shape. Imagine in which glorious shape the geniuses out there will be able to twist the AI in the coming years. Now, this isn't at all to say that you must adopt AI or perish as an artist. The entire point of this channel is to find ways through the AI wave without using AI. 
to figure out what traditional artists like you and I, who aren't interested at all in using AI in their art, should do to keep themselves safe from it. And one of our tools can be the following prediction, based on today's experience. AI progress will likely further disrupt industry, but in the field of arts, as in the kind of thing that artists such as Picasso were up to, where the artist has no prompts, no clients, and is truly just trying to oppress themselves fully, it isn't the increase of AI performance and the making of models that are always bigger that threatens us the most, but it is people finding new creative uses of existing AI systems. In the near future, we will see many new ways of creatively using these stale and boring AI models, and that will have the biggest impact on the non-industrial aspect of arts. As artists, we must keep an eye on these and not launch ourselves into projects in which these AIs used creatively will outshine us. Cool, so what did we learn along the way today? Before I recap, I'd like to ask you guys if anything crossed your mind while watching this video. If you have any questions for me or opinions to share, I encourage you to do all that in the comments section. I'll read and respond, and that's how we're most likely to figure out a way through the trouble that we're in right now. So here were the three things that we covered today. First, we learned a bit more about AI and we gained some more practical experience with it. Second, we learned that although industry keeps trying to push bigger and bigger models, they might be losing some flexibility and creative use of these models along the way. And as such, it's possible that these rigid, big models won't have as much of an impact on the more profound aspects of art. And finally, we made a prediction based on today's experience about the shape in which the future of AI is most likely to disrupt the field of art. Now, if you're interested in more videos like this coming from someone who both makes arts and works in AI research, you can subscribe to the ArtPost AI channel. And if you want to support this channel, you can watch the segment that's about to start. And if you're interested, check out the link in the description. And I'll see you guys next time. Triumph and the strife